Hi, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking today about ActiveX components in Siebel Enterprise. Here's an ActiveX component which I created using Microsoft Visual Studio. It is, I'm not a programmer, but this is just a simple tool. This tool has very little code, but it is designed to let a user click on a vehicle to identify where an accident has occurred. Um, so all this is standard programming. Uh, this is nothing that I invented, but it does try and illustrate that even for a simple tool, there is a large amount of managed programming that has to happen. The actual uh, vehicle ActiveX control will look a little bit like this so that when a user clicks on it, it will register it being clicked and there are two properties, X and Y positions, which will register the coordinates. Now, in order to have this ActiveX, I need to create a setup file so that I can de uh, deploy the file on the developer machines and a cab file which I will need to deploy on the end user machines. So the setup routine for the developers and the cab CAB cabinet file these will form part of my development and user deployments back in my user environment now having installed back in my developer environment having installed the tool I can uh, just show you that I have had to update the registry although this was done using the um, install routine again nothing I've invented simply telling you that this is a developer machine and this would have to be deployed and installed in this fashion when I go to Siebel Tools, I register the existence of my control using the DLL and the class objects. Here you can see that I've had to register the DLL using the class ID, which I found in the registry, and I have registered the existence of the cab file, whereas in the classes, I have also had to register the existence of my DLL and register it as an ActiveX control. There we go. So this file, I need to reference the cab file in the pre-deploy.htm script, which uh, htm file, which is used to deploy the ActiveX controls to the end users. It's in the public ENU folder, so if you're running multiple languages, you'll need to have multiple instances, perhaps, of this cab file with a different UI. But let's go to my pre-deploy file. Here it is. I opened it earlier. So this is a standard Siebel applications pre-deployment file designed to help us administrators deploy ActiveXs that form part of the standard Siebel release. So I would have to include my new non-standard ActiveX as part of this file, including the class ID and a reference to the cab file. This would have to be deployed on all of the users who are going to actually use my control. So when I open the window on a user machine, they would see something like this, only with my new ActiveX, they would also see something like this. Of course, this could be scripted and automated, but effectively this DLL, this ActiveX, would have to be deployed on each of the end user's machines through Internet Explorer. Now let's go to my applet, and in this case, it's a very simple applet. You'll notice that when I right-click and choose Edit Web Layout, I get a warning message. This is because the ActiveX has been placed on the applet. As you can see, the Siebel Tools development environment allows me to include ActiveXs on my applet, and once they are included, I can see the X and Y pro properties here that I showed you in Visual Studio. and you'll see the class is referenced. I will choose Edit Browser Scripts, and I will be responsible, of course, as a Siebel developer, for implementing whatever business logic and code which is to manipulate both Siebel data through set field value or get field value, as well as, of course, manipulating the ActiveX through the properties and methods that it may expose. So in my case, as a simple demonstration, I'm storing the two outputs, the X and Y coordinates, using fields in a business component.
Going into the application and choosing contacts, I'm going to display one contact, and I'm going to display the applet which includes my ActiveX control. In order for this applet to work, therefore, the ActiveX must have been deployed and downloaded to the Internet Explorer browser of the user. So now when I click on the applet, the values in my business component, particularly specifically the X and Y coordinates, are updated. There we go. Of course, since this is browser scripting, I will be responsible for making sure that the correct browser scripts have been generated and the corresponding JS files have been deployed to my Siebel web server using the timestamped folder that is provided. But each time a new version of this code is created, I will need to make sure that these files are updated and everyone is therefore able to use the enhanced functionality. If I go to the Internet Options and go to the settings of my browser and display the files that have been downloaded, with a bit of luck, we will find in this list that we have in fact downloaded the JS files. You may in fact see them more than once because they are version controlled. So um, that's why they're there twice. So yet another layer of sophistication that is required to be managed and handled that's it. I hope you had a great time understanding just how many steps you need to deploy an ActiveX control in Siebel. See you next time.